Hello everyone. So in previous video, we have seen the pipeline approach and that can be applicable in arithmetic and instruction pipeline. So in this video, we will see the arithmetic pipeline. So usually found in very high speed computers and used to implement floating point operations, multiplication of fixed point numbers and similar computation encountered in scientific problems. <clears throat> so floating point operation are easily decomposed into sub operation. So that is the main goal of this arithmetic pipeline. We want to decompose into sub operation. So for floating point operation, this can be easily possible. So floating point addition and subtraction can be decomposed in this four sub operation. First, compare the exponent. Second, align the mantissa, add or subtract the mantissa and normalize the result, right? So these are the four possible sub operation when you use a floating point numbers for addition and subtraction. Let's take the example for this. So I want addition of this two floating point numbers, right? So and I have represented in 10 to the power and in the <coughs> floating point number, right? So this representation is such that the floating point number can represent it into I triple E format, right? So X is this and Y is this, right? So this is our X, this is our Y. We want to perform the addition of these two number right so now the first step the first step is compare the exponent so right so this is our exponent 10 uh, 3 and 2 right so 3 and 2 these are <coughs> two exponent so now we'll compare it by subtracting those two exponent 3 minus 2 it's 1 right so larger exponent 3 that is chosen as the exponent of the result. So in result, the exponent will be this 3. Okay, larger one 10 is to 3. So now the next step is align the mantissa, right? So we need to align the mantissa. So for that, what we'll do, we will shift this right shift this number 0 0.8200 will perform the right shift so it will be 0 0.0820 multiply by 10 raised to 3 right so then you can see that this is now same right power is now same right now next add the mantissa after aligning the mantissa Right, because here it's 0 0.82, but it's 10 is to 2, and here 0 0.95, but it's a 10 is to 3. So we have aligned the mantissa, right? So now they are in same power 0 0.0820 multiplied by 10 is to 3. So now you can add the mantissa. So we have added the mantissa, and this is 1.0324 into 10 is to 3. This is our mantissa, right? Then you need to normalize the result because this example we are taking into decimal But in your computer this will be performed in a binary format, right? And specifically a I triple E standard So we need to normalize it. So Normalization means it must be zero point something Right, so we have normalized it. So when you shift perform the shift operation shift right operation at that time you need to increment it so the number of time you shift you need to increment this exponent so we have shift perform the right shift one time so we'll increment it one so now 0 0.10324 into 10 raised to 4 right so this is the normalized result so you can consider this operation as a four sub operation this is segment one this is segment two this is segment three and this is segment four so parallelly this 
uh, operation can be performed right so this way we have achieved the parallelism and we can improve the performance so how so for segment 1 suppose the time is 60 nanosecond means compare the exponent the time will be taken that is 60 nanosecond then 42 align the mantissa the time is suppose 70 nanosecond for addition of mantissa it's 100 nanosecond and for normalize the result it's a 80 nanosecond and if you remember that between each uh, operation right what we are putting we are putting the registers right so we can easily transfer the data so that register suppose that delay takes 10 nanosecond for all the registers okay now these are time for different segment now each and every operation that works on clock so we need to set the time for clock as well right so the clock time clock time at tp how we can set the clock time so we need to take the largest time so in this four segment 100 is the largest value so i need to take that 100 nanosecond right i need to take 100 nanosecond and same time we are also using that register right so transfer that time that is a 10 nanosecond so that is 110 nanosecond for one clock so we will set for one clock the time is 110 nanosecond now if you find the speed up if you remember the equation of speed up the speed up equation is non pipeline approach upon pipeline approach so if i write this equation speed up that is tn upon tp right i am taking n is very very much larger so you can write like this tn upon tp so tp just we have calculated that is 110 now tn tn is time to complete one task in a non-linear fashion so what you need to do just you need to add this n plus this 10 nanosecond for register delay so that is 320 and one clock that is 110 because for first for first uh, result you will the cpu will take 110 multiply by 4 but after that after each clock means after 110 nanosecond you will get the next 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 result first result in this case you will get after 110 multiply by 4 nanosecond but after that it each 110 nanosecond you will get the result in this case first result at 320 next result after 320 right so with this pipeline approach the speed up that is possible is 2.9 right if you divide this you will get approximately 2.9 so this is the arithmetic pipeline so in arithmetic pipeline what we are doing we are dividing the whole operation into sub operation right so we can perform the parallel operation so this is about arithmetic pipeline in next lecture we will see the instruction pipeline